we as a society have been reminded once more that racism exists and that it has fatal and tragic consequences. Now that we've understood the basics of racism, I thought now is the best time to start talking about ways that we can make long lasting changes. According to Wikipedia, white saviorism is when white people act to help non-white people and the help is perceived as self-serving. Author Teju Cole coined the expression white saviour industrial complex. Mission trip, according to Wikipedia again, is traditionally seen as people mobilising to spread their faith, along with community service aspects. Let's say a church in England decides to send 10 people to Ethiopia, for example. This group will build houses, they'll try on grass skirts, and they'll eat local cuisine. To save up money to go to Ethiopia, they'll hold cake sales at work, and do sponsored silences. Often the group that is sent over may not all necessarily have the correct work background that would transfer easily to the tasks that they are hoping to do. Let's go back to the group, the example I gave just a couple seconds ago. We would assume that if you're going to build a house, perhaps you're a construction expert, perhaps you've been building houses and that's what you do, that's your skill, you're very talented at it. Perhaps you design buildings, perhaps you're well versed in local building materials. Unfortunately, that's not what often happens. Let me be clear, I'm not calling anybody unintelligent. I'm not saying that the group won't have wonderful skills. I'm simply saying that perhaps they may not be the best people to send over to do that particular task. Let's take me as an example. I studied law for four years. You won't catch me offering to build someone a house because while I can waffle a little bit about land law, I know nothing about physically putting a house together. My skills will be best served elsewhere. Let's say we've got the same group, a group of 10 from a church in England. Instead of building houses, this time, they're going to some remote village in Africa to serve in an orphanage for a few weeks, maybe a couple months if we're lucky. In going to an orphanage for a short amount of time and hoping to help the children, what can unfortunately end up happening is this can have a negative impact on the children's attachment. Let's say there's a child living in an orphanage. Let's call them Ted. Ted has been living in the orphanage for as far back as he can remember. He's three years old. Let's say that one day Ted wakes up and there's a new group of people at the orphanage. It's our 10 friends from the church in England. And these 10 friends are gonna help Ted. They're gonna do finger painting. They're gonna teach Ted how to sing Amazing Grace and Kumbaya. When you're three, you don't really understand distance. For Ted, one day he's there having a great time doing finger painting and learning Amazing Grace. The next day, that group of 10 are back on their plane and they're heading back home. As a three-year-old, Ted has no real understanding of what it means for them to say, we're going home now. Now imagine that this cycle repeats itself. Let's imagine that that same orphanage has several different groups from all over the world, usually the West, traveling over, doing craft activities and singing. As our friends from England are leaving and going back on their flight, there's another group from somewhere else making their way in. For children who are very young, it's important that we're very conscient conscious of attachment because it can actually have a long-lasting effect into adulthood and it can impact the way that adults form relationships themselves. That um, disadvantage in orphanages is not the only one. Um, there are all too many cases that have been brought to light of perhaps not enough scrutiny of the adults who are allowed into the premises. This can often have awful results. 
I saw an online and read an amazing portion of a thesis. I'm gonna put that in my description box. And it was talking about white saviorism in film. It's fascinating because I've seen my fair share of trash films. But I've never really thought about the way that black characters are often presented in films. I found it a lot easier to criticise when it's in TV shows because I think then you start to really appreciate that the black character has not said anything for four seasons and that's not good enough. In films, when we talk about the white saviour complex, we're talking about the way that a character is developed and portrayed. We're talking about the films where it's very clear that the only reason the black character is there is to further enhance and to further glorify and build up the image of the white characters. It's that trope that a black character is the spiritual one who's meant to guide the white character to their big revelation. It's the fact that in so many films, the black best friend is simply there to say sassy one-liners and to dramatically shake her head and say, oh no, you didn't. It's things like that. Now, the harm of this is that for white people who don't actually engage very, very much with people of colour for whatever reason, they start to form their opinion on minorities based on what they see in films. So to a white person who watches films where black characters are portrayed as carefree, thriving, spiritual, but not too developed, mind you, they start to believe that racism doesn't exist or the racism isn't that bad because in the films, all the black characters were thriving and jiving. They were having a great time. Fuck racism. Mm. So it's actually quite harmful when we think about it like that because we don't need to be basing our opinions on films that are grossly inaccurate. A fair few people who go on mission trips are quite young. They, they've potentially just finished high school or they're taking a gap year or they've just graduated. All of these things are great. I think graduates are great and I think it's absolutely wonderful that people who've just left high school are so keen to make a difference in the world and to see beyond their small town or their small village that they've grown up in. However, imagine you're from the village and you're waiting for them to build you a house personally. Imagine you're a mother, church has offered to build a house for you. Now imagine that a group of people from across the world rock up and a fair few of them at least are around the age, if not younger, than some of your own children. I've not been in this situation myself, so I cannot speak for how everybody in that situation feels but I can certainly see an argument for that feeling quite embarrassing potentially I think it can feel a bit patronizing I am privileged in the way that I've not been in that situation myself personally let's talk about let's talk about the problems with taking photos of children while you're on mission trips when you take a photo of children at the orphanage you're volunteering at or children at the village you're volunteering at we all know the ones you're sitting surrounded by these little adorable melanated kids looking up at you adoringly you caption it i feel so blessed let's talk about the two biggest groups that are the most negatively impacted by what you're doing first of all the children when you post a photo online it stays there forever. A child cannot possibly understand what that means. Even us as adults, we're still grappling with that fact and that's why your faves are often being canceled because the internet stays up forever. It's permanent. Once you post that online, you lose control of where that photo ends up. Let's reverse the situation. Let's imagine me, my melanated self, let's imagine I decide to volunteer in a village here in England and so I decided to take a photo of all the children surrounding me looking up at me adoringly that would make you uncomfortable right if I post that photo the first question you'll ask is where are the kids parents uh, are the parents okay with me doing that let's talk about how parents are impacted negatively when you post that photo online 
Parents are very often not consulted and even if you do ask for the parents' consent, let's talk about the uneven power dynamic between you as the volunteer and them as the parents. If you imagine that you're in a situation where you're hoping for a house to be built by volunteers and then those volunteers say, hey, can I take a photo of your baby? Even if you as the guardian feel a little bit uncomfortable, potentially you might feel a bit indebted to the group. And let's not slate the parents I'm, and the guardians. I'm not saying that they are bad guardians. I'm not saying they're bad parents, not at all. I'm saying let's be aware of the uneven power dynamics and not only is it disrespectful for the children not only is it disrespectful for the parents slash guardians of the children but also the third group that are impacted by this are the people of colour in your world because your non-white friends see you posting a photo in which you're presenting yourself as the saviour of the world to all of these melanated kings and queens around you in the photo. Okay, I can only speak for myself, but this is my own personal reaction. I am absolutely dumbfounded because it seems that despite however long I have considered you a friend and you have considered me one of yours, you see children who look like me, who have names that you find just as hard to pronounce as you find my own, and instead of seeing autonomous human beings who are deserving of respect, you see a photo opportunity. You see a chance to paint yourself as the hero at the center of their stories. So you want to make a difference, but you don't want to be a white savior. I have four tips. Tip number one, if you want to take photos to really, I guess, savor that memory, do not take photos of children. Instead of taking photos of the children, why not take photos and really highlight the excellent work that the people running the premises are doing? Okay, tip number two is educate. Sometimes there are nuances and there are stereotypes and there are harmful ideas that, as a person of colour, I know instinctively make me feel uncomfortable and that could potentially make other people who look like me also feel uncomfortable. If you are a white person, you do not have the experiences in racism and in stereotyping and in harmful portrayals of your race that perhaps people of colour have. Therefore, the onus is on you to educate yourself. And there is a plethora of resources, of YouTube videos, of TED Talks that can help you better understand. Tip number three is support. I think one of the best things that we can do when you have a burning desire to help a community, instead of thinking that you have to physically put yourself at the centre of that community, perhaps research local based organisations that you can support, that perhaps you can donate, perhaps you can spread awareness of them or spread awareness of the issues they're facing. This is because a person who lives in an area will know that area better than you. Instead of automatically jumping to take that flight that you've saved up for, perhaps consider donating some of the money that you've saved through your cake sales, through your sponsor silences, and instead giving that money to a charity that is based in that area that your heart is seeking to help. My final tip is use your expertise. We are all generally pretty good at at least one thing. Figure that out and then use that skill to help other people. It's absolutely wonderful to have a desire to help other communities and to see people who are struggling and who are hurt and to want to do your best to help them. There might be a way that you can help that community that isn't as direct as going to see them per se. So those four tips are don't take photos of children. If you have to, take photos of adults. Tip number two is educate yourself. Tip number three is support local businesses and charities. And tip number four, look at your expertise and use it to help. That's all for now. This video is horrendously long. I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. But if this video made you uncomfortable, that's even better, to be honest.